Good morning, everyone. It's almost 6 o'clock. The stream ended just a little bit ago, just making sure that nothing else came out to surprise us, which a little bit did and a little bit didn't. So we're going to do our live stream coverage, and we're going to start off very quickly with the actual animations for the two new units. So we have EX Wind Shizu. We will cover what she does in a bit, but let's watch her alt real fast and we'll turn the animation the music up and we'll turn me down. Looks, it's it's a very long alt, just like Hanada's alt is very long and very flashy with a lot of movement. Shizu's also has that same feel to her. Uh, it looks pretty good. And then we'll move on, and the second unit is the Masked Hero 2.0. Uh, very different than the first Masked Hero, we'll just put that out there. So, but let's go on to her animation. And let's turn me down again. Much less flashy, I'll tell you that much. It's very short, very to the point. Um, I mean, her alt looks fine. Her outfit looks great. I like her, I, I like her outfit more than I like Shizu's, but I like Shizu's alt a lot more because I feel like they put more effort into it. Uh, but obviously, they couldn't give Hero you know, like too many voice lines, right? No, that's the thing. So let's start off. Let's uh, let's look at the hero first. So she is Ex Light. She is on. World of Fantasy, so it's still part of the same meta, technically. So World of Fantasy, Heart of a Hero, and the uh, it's Light Shion's uh, Goddess of Victory or something like that. Hold on, I'm looking it up because I forget already. Uh, Light Shion, it is Goddess of Destiny is what this ring is. So she's on these three forces, World of Fantasy, Heart of a Hero, and Goddess of Destiny. Her first skill, well actually, let's go, her alt is a 300% AoE, and then her EX alt is 600%, and so it's it's just like all the other AoE uh, units for EX, or just I guess it's just Rimuru, because he's the only AoE EX. Uh, regardless, she also, uh, let's see, increases all allies' physical attack by 5% for one turn, so cool, that helps out. She is definitely a support unit. Uh, her first skill is so you know how like fire 2.0 benny mario had the 50 percent damage buff on oranges yeah uh she's got 50 percent damage buff on all orbs doesn't matter oranges blues greens they're all 50 percent damage buffed so that's cool and then the second part of that skill is she lowers the elemental resistance of all enemies by 50 percent and so you know how old Hinata used to buff all of her resistances at once, like everything. Well, the hero's doing that, but it's a debuff. So you will do 50% more damage on all of your orbs, and you will they will take 50% more damage from whatever element you happen to be. It, it does not discriminate, and it hits all of your allies. So everyone on your team will be able to hit the enemies harder, because no matter what element you are, they have that debuff on them. So definitely a support unit. Only 25 costs, so it's not bad. It's not that expensive. And you know, you know the, the, uh, the fantasy team is built for low cost burst damage. And this will definitely help out. Uh, her second skill, that is not a typo. That is a zero cost skill. And what it does is that it converts an alt orb into a green orb. Now, I don't know if it's 
all alt orbs or just one? Let me retranslate it because I actually. Uh, it is, yeah, it is just one alt orb. So you know how during the Fount of Wisdom you would have, you know, Hinata's alt orb just chilling there and you would have to bring it in and blah, 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 blah. And it would take up a lot of space for your six hands of blues because you couldn't send them. Well, what the hero is going to do is she's going to just switch those. So your alt orb will go away. You'll still have the alt. It won't, like, it'll, it won't just delete it. But it will transfer it into a green orb so you can send a full hand of greens. And if you have done it in such a way where your greens are buffed, you could then keep Milam on the front line, give her a six sand of greens, and then get her EX alt. So then the following turn, her alt will come back as an EX. It's very interesting in concept. They did show us some gameplay of it, but... Essentially, that's what it's doing, is it's replacing the orb with a normal orb so you can guarantee yourself a six combo without having that, you know, a five combo and an alt or just a five combo and breaking up your whole string. So it's a very interesting skill. It is not rewind to 2.0, unfortunately, but <laughs> it is what it is. And uh, then moving on to Shizu. So she is also a support unit. So she is Wind Shizu, also on the World of Fantasy, also on Heart of a Hero, and on Fount of Wisdom. Interesting choice there. So she also has an AoE alt, 300%, lowers defense by 5% for two turns. So, okay, you're going to hit harder because of that as well. So Shizu's lowering defense, the hero is raising your physical attack. They work pretty well together, at least, you know, to combine to help Milim do more damage, because Milim's a single target, right? Uh, and then EX is 200%, so 600% alt damage right there. Whatever. Her first skill <clears throat> is 15% attack for the World of Fantasy or Fount of Wisdom units. And that stacks forever. It is a stacking attack buff. 15, 30. 45, 60%. It goes up and up and up. It has no limit. And it applies to both World of Fantasy and Fount of Wisdom, which, you know, Fount of Wisdom already has enough buffs, you thought, right? Wrong. Because now Hinata's going to have her 60% attack buff, 65% physical attack buff, guaranteed pierce and 50% pierce resistance down. She has her 40% alt gauge or alt damage buff. And then you're going to have 15 increments of 15% extra attack that's permanent, so it will stack with hers. Uh, we're going to make Hinata hit some real dumb numbers, and I'm really sad that her beat down, their beatdown battle isn't here right now, because I would love to test it there. Uh, so yeah, that's what her first skill does. Uh, also, as a secondary effect for that same skill, uh, she gives 5% skill point gain to all orbs which is also stackable. So you're stacking attack, and you're stacking permanently the skill point gain on all types of orbs. So kind of like what Shinsha did, Dark Shinsha, uh, on her secondary effect. She you know permanently increased the skill points you gain from all orbs. That's what she's doing. Is, that's what Shizu's doing as well. Uh, the second skill, it's super basic. It's just an orb change. It's a single orange to single green orb change. 10% gauge increase. It's nothing to write home about um but overall like these units seem good on paper they seem good like shizu with her stacking attack buff will be a good support unit the hero with like that's that alt swap kind of thing going on will be interesting to play around with uh and then the elemental resistance and orb attack buff will just help you do uh, dumb numbers with normal orbs um not not quite the powerhouses that i thought they would be but this is as you can see right here part one of the 1.5 anniversary so we know that there's going to be a part two banner so maybe they're holding the dps's with the really really wanked out skills for the part two uh this banner also goes until the 31st of may so it's going to be around for quite a while so it will overlap the normal world of fantasy because that leaves on the 27th of april uh, the Freya Millen banner does. And then it will over also overlap with the incoming meta, whatever that is, which 
I saw a few people think that it's going to be Heart of a Hero because they both have the same categories, at least the first two categories, uh, as the same. So, I mean, it's it's a reasonable assumption right there. It's only the third one that's different, Fountain of Wisdom versus Goddess of Destiny. So, those are the two, two new units. It is a 5% rate-up banner. Um, do, do, do. It says it somewhere. But it is a 5% East Sky Revelry banner, so that's that. The general pool, as of a couple hours, as of three hours ago, updated with everything up to, what, Earth? Earth 2.0? Um, so that's already active, and they will be in this banner as well. So, you know, kudos to that. But now, let's go back into the beginning of the stream now that we've covered that. Everyone's favorite thing is back. The friend code invite system. Because we all know how much fun we had with it last time. They're like, you know what? Let's do it again. And let's not make it any different, except for the amount of uh, crystals that you get. You get less. I think last time you got 800 or something? Maybe, maybe 600? This time you get 400. Um, I don't know how many friends you actually have to invite. Obviously, I think it's just five, if you just base it off of this picture. Uh, so hopefully it's a little bit easier to get your friends active on this. So this will be active tonight. Um, good luck. We've My Discord, I will repost the friend code, uh, the invite friend code channel. Please don't go bonkers on it. Please only post in that channel if you don't. I will warn you, or the mods will warn you, and if not, then we're going to get a little serious. Because last time it was fucking hell trying to manage this. So this time we're just we're going to crack down. Just heads up right there. Don't be an idiot. Don't spam your code literally everywhere. Because uh, I don't want to see it. And they don't want to see it. And no one else wants to see it outside of the actual channel that I've dedicated it to. So there's that. Um, we got announced that they will be, East Sky Memories will be on Google Play Games when, sometime in the future. I don't know when. It's currently not on it, at least for me right now. I don't know if it's on the JP version, but, uh, that will be coming to Google Play Games. So that's cool, because I can stop using the emulator, and hopefully it runs a little better just off of Google itself. We'll find out. Uh, moving on. Here is a little road map that we have going on right now. So the 18th tonight, you know, we get the Maltese, we get the new characters, um, new gear technically is what this is saying. We'll cover that in a bit. Um, they open up all these as we go on, but this first one is the introduction of story chapter 21, which will begin the new original story for Slime, of which they're also going to give out or introduce a new character a new original character for the game just like shinsha and isis this one has been translated to her name is cliche without the tilde on it but that's that's what it is uh but it's voiced by miku ito who is you know a bunch of characters mm, she's taiga in fate she is oh god she's in something else that i can't think of right now because i deleted her page She's in quite a few things, but she she's a decently well-known VA, so the fact that we got her in the game as a new character is great. So, that is that right there. Uh, going back to the roadmap, number two is the skill revamp, and they do have a bunch of information on that, and the list of units that were selected. Uh, this is a special, large project coming early summer they did not elaborate on it they just made a big hubbub that a new large project is going to get announced and we'll get more information closer to the release this could be a collab this could be live pvp this could be guilds i don't we don't know they didn't tell us anything other than large project so you know take with it what you will i guess we'll be guessing for the next couple months or so and then this fourth one right here is a new building area for Tempest. It's going to be focused on like the festive kind of party where they always have it in Tempest. It should be a new location to build things, just like we got the seascape, townscape, uh, or the the riverside, riverfront area. That was a new place to build items alongside the normal area. This should be now our third building area that will also come early summer, is what it says. 
Um, here, over the course of the campaign, you will get a hundred total summons, and it comes in a very quick way. And then we move on to the first part, which is the new gear. So starting today, later today, there will be new Valor Cup exclusive gear, which will give you, I think it says, increased stats only in Valor Cup. And this, the, uh, like what you get from it will rotate. They're going to give away a long sword or sword and a great sword for free because that's what Shizu and the hero use. And then I don't know about the rest of the gear. I, it's, I believe it's ranking rewards. So just another thing to do for ranked Valor Cup on top of the moats, on top of the shitty Octogram gear, or uh, you now get new Valor Cup gear. And then down here at the very bottom, in late April, they will release a brand new Conquest stage that you will be able to farm the Awakening materials for this Valor Cup gear specifically. So, new Conquest stage for new Valor Cup gear. Uh, we don't know what the stats look like. We don't know what the effects are as far as, you know, how, what, how they affect you in Valor Cup. We just know that it's coming tonight. And we'll find out a little bit more, I guess. Uh, moving on, this is the character announcement. So, Miku Ito. Uh, this is the lead up to the story chapter 21. So, they'll be taking a bunch of previously existing stages out and making it kind of like a countdown thing up to the release of the new story chapter, which I believe releases with the next meta on the 27th slash 28th, whatever time zone you're in. All right, so let's move on. Uh, they did some VA dubbing right there. Uh, here is skill revamp. So what they're going to do is that once the, the chosen characters, once you hit level 10, you can then further awaken them using enhancement skills, and they become stronger or just straight up different. So here is the list of characters that were chosen to be revamped. So Wind Valentine, Dark Diablo 1.0, Guy, Dark Rimuru, OG Fire Shizu, OG Windmillum, OG Trainee, Water Velzard, and Raphael will be the first characters to be reworked alongside all of the existing Octagram battle units, which we didn't know was happening. They were not a, a choosable option on the survey, so we were like, man, I really wish we could have chosen them because a lot of these skills are really, really bad and outdated. Well, looks like they already knew that because they're going to revamp them as well. Uh, the only one that's not here is obviously Octagram Rimuru because he's not a battle unit, unfortunately. Oh, well. But then it gives us an example of the differences in the skill right here. So let me retranslate this and I will tell you what they do. So, Raphael's first skill, as it exists currently, is decreases enemy's defense by 45% for one turn and then increases his own pierce power by 30% for two turns. That's how it is right now. When you awaken it up to its new maximum level, I don't know what that is, uh, it will be decreases all enemies' defense by 50%, so it's a 5% increase, and then increases all water allies penetrate, so pierce power, by 50% for one turn. So instead of being a 30% buff for himself for two turns, it is now a water allies pierce power by 50% for one turn. So Water Alice will give the Pierce and the Water Resistance down. Raphael will now give all Water Allies 50% Pierce power. That's, that's that's pretty good for the same cost as well. Still 55 points. So that, that is a big jump right there. Big jump in usability. 5% extra defense down. Good. 50% Pierce power for all Water Allies. It's specific, right? It's specific to Water Allies. But it, it, I think it'll work pretty well. Uh, Guy, though, this is his defense seal skill, the thing that we all hated the most. So, uh, Currently, it exists as 100% uh, chance to seal defense on all enemies for one turn. And that was it. That was it. You just sealed defense up. His skill now is still 100% chance to seal defense up. 
and then increases physical fire damage of all allies by 40% for one turn. So, because, I mean, at least it's translated to physical fire, so it has two different conditions. You must be physical, you must be fire. What this makes me think is that it will stack with an existing just fire buff or just physical buff. We'll have to see how that goes. Um, but if it does, that means that, you know, Violet can get the physical buff from EX Remo. He, she can get the fire buff from um, Fire Shizu. And then she can get this buff from Guy. So, you know, 65%, 50%, 40%. I mean, if they do stack like that, it's gonna... It, ooh, that's gonna be quite a nice damage buff alongside sealing their defense still. So it still retains that part of it. It's just added on a whole nother big chunk of damage that you can do. So that is the example of what they're doing with the skill revamp. They don't talk about the other two skills for, you know, R Rafa or other skill for Raphael and Guy. I don't know if they're actually being changed or not. We don't know any of the other skills that are changing for these characters, especially not the Octogram characters. I don't know when we will get that information. Um, let's see. Hold on. Let me try and translate this again. Uh, I believe this is going to happen at the end of April. So it's still going to be a minute before we get the skill revamp, which I didn't think we were going to get it now anyways. But So that's that. Um, and now, Remuru's VA is going to pick another character out of the box to get a skill revamp. So she does. And she picks what translates to... Space 3.0 Shion, which is ridiculous because she came out just a few months ago. So I don't know if that's just a placeholder for Shion in general, or if Space 3.0 Shion, with her charm effect and her pierce and pierce power, uh, is actually going to get revamped. I don't... I would, I would take this with a very, very fat grain of salt, if it's actually her. I think they meant to put Dark Shion 1.0. Like the OG, or the OG Shion. Um, but, I mean, I, I guess we'll we'll wait and see. <laughs> we will wait and see. Uh, this is Gabber rolling a dice for some different rewards. I think he rolls a 4, so we get 20 of the lizard men things and a, a ticket. So, yeah, whoop de doo uh, Moving on... This is a retweet campaign. If we get 400 retweets, then we all get 10 tickets. I believe this is 10 tickets on the actual Half Annie banner. They did not ever confirm that, though. Uh, and then this is a giveaway for Japanese people. It's signed by the Gabaru and Mil or Rimuru's VAs, but only Japanese people can get this, so it doesn't apply to most of us. Uh, then they're going back through, so story chapter with a new character, skill revamp, big project and this is the founding the new area so you know every time they have a celebration they're all drinking there and just like this big old courtyard with the fountain i feel like this is this is going to be a new area to build since we technically already have the fountain but there's nowhere to build around it now because i assume all your spots are taken up um and then this is the whole big project announcement hooray and that that's all the information we have and then we go on to the actual characters which we've already covered moving on it is a five percent east kai revelry banner so that's you know no different than what we were expecting uh and then the packs so we've got 1200 crystal with i believe this is a selector ticket alongside a shard or it might be a ticket would you can maybe pick a, sh a, a dupe of an ex character i don't i don't actually know uh, and then a thousand, you know, crystals, and then some five rainbow moats and five protector shards. That is a pretty good pack right there, because I would like to level up my 112s to 120s. And we've got two packs with protector shard, EX shards and battle EX shards. I will probably buy all of these uh, if they do exist for realsies. Uh, because we haven't had a meaningful banner in three weeks now. So it's time, I've got the itch. I've got the itch to summon. And we will definitely be doing that tonight. Uh, moving on. Here is a big thing right here. 
So, just like for the anniversary and the many campaigns we had after it, we had all those anniversary coins, and that shop stayed for like four months, right? And you could buy a whole bunch of stuff, and sometimes it reset, sometimes it didn't. Well, they're going to do the same thing for the half an one and a half anniversary with new medals. However, however, you can straight up buy characters with this now. The hero. You can, you can buy the hero. This is essentially free, right? You get these from missions. You get them from login. It's going to go on for f until July 3rd. So by, the, by July 3rd, I mean, yeah, they cost 360, but you can just get a free hero. You can get a free Water Shuna. You can get a free, you know, Space Goddamn Leon. I can get a free copy of Rain. I don't have to spend anything to get Rain, and then I will have my collection will be complete. This is big. This is huge. Oh, I'm sorry, you don't have the hero for Jubilee? Well, give it a little bit, and you will. I mean, there's some other five star things in here tickets and shards and all that, 10% rate up and bullshit. But honestly, like, you should be buying characters that are going to help you. You should be buying the hero. If you don't have the hero, that is number one priority for you. Number numero uno. And then everything else is, you know, as we go. But the hero, old hero, still the only character with rewind. Still the most broken skill in the game. So, she's kind of important if you don't have her. But this is huge. You can only buy them once, which is fine, because they cost a lot. And I don't, I don't actually know how many of these medals you're going to accumulate over the next three months. But, um, yeah, this is, this is big. This is big news. You can round out your box if you have everyone, but you're missing that one unit like I am. Uh, you can get the hero or some other very, very strong support unit uh, that you're missing. This is, this is good. I like this. This is good for all players. And then they go through some beatdown battle. We won't really cover that because we'll just do it on stream tonight. Um, and then we've got a few of the updates. We have the beginner's missions coming back. So during the one year anniversary, they drop this and they're like, hey, you're a new player, reach these specific milestones and you can get all these materials that'll help you rank up and everything. And if you already did that because you're a long time player, you just get all this shit for free. Well, this is coming back. So if you're a long time player, you you meet whatever conditions they are because they don't actually tell us what they are then we just get all of this stuff, which is nice. Um, moving on, we have a new way to filter characters. So based on your protection unit, you can click this button and then it will determine what protector you're using, what forces they have, and then it will filter only to characters that fit those forces. So it's just another layer of filtering because we technically already got the force filter with this most recent update. Um, that happened earlier. So that's already live, but this is another way to for filter just based on the protector you're currently using. I don't know if it only works for actual forces or if it works for just metas, like light, physical. I don't know what it's going to do there, but we'll find out tonight. Um, and then, yeah, the current like in-game filtering option is there. They kind of go through that. And then Jubilee. Should be starting tonight, apparently, at 4.18, you know, 11 o'clock. 24th Jubilee against Milam. You get a new carousel building, along with crystals and moats and stuff. So, I didn't think they would start it now. But it's going from the 18th to the 26th, which is next Wednesday. So, we got quite a bit of time, which is good, because I'm not going to be able to record Jubilee videos until probably Thursday. So... You're going to have to think of your own strategies until then, because I, I, I will not have time to do Jubilee until until the weekend, essentially. Uh, so that's coming. We're also getting a new challenge event against Romarus this time, which you get hammers and crystals. She has her own shop as well. You can exchange the, the crystals you get from this into that shop. So just more stuff to, to grind and farm out and get rewards for. And then we are also getting another free fourth building slot for seven days. So this is always helpful for people, helpful for me, helpful if you need to upgrade your magic buildings or whatever your population to get to a certain thing. This is always great. I always welcome this. And then that's about it. Then they go into a whole bunch of, you know, VA dubbing stuff and it's not terribly important. They have some new figures coming out. 
But that's about it for the coverage. I know it's about half hour video. Um, but the units initially seem decent. They don't seem broken. They don't seem bad. But they seem decent. We'll have to see. Uh, showcases again because I'm not here a lot this week will be maybe delayed. I don't. I'll try. I'll try my best. Um, but we'll have to see. There's always. There is also part two of the half anniversary. So we'll see what the, that banner has as well in next week, two weeks from now. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that's it for the coverage video. I'll see you tonight at 7 p.m. And we shall spend some money, which I know all of you love watching me do. And then getting shafted. Hopefully not. But yeah, let me know what you guys think on this, all this stuff that's coming in. Uh, that's it for me. Take it easy, and I'll see you guys later today. Alright, well, the uh, Dev Diary is up on their Facebook page. So we can see a few things here. The new character. New characters in limited time recruits. We have their AoEs. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Here we go. So, new original story chapter. And then finally, new nation building feature, which is should be the new area that we talked about previously. The fun of a festival brought to life, check out the festival area. So that's why that's happening. And then we get this. Early summer, special project announcement planned. So we'll, we'll see what this is. East Kind Memories is getting ready to evolve. Don't miss it. So there's that, and then we go over their characters, um, friend code thing, and now here is the actual example of the skill revamp and how to awaken skills. So current skill is level 10, and this is Raphael's skill, 45% down and 30% up, and then to go to a awakened level 1 skill, it's going to cost a few different things right here. So three rainbow, five gold, and ten of the silvers. And I assume this is like the skill being at level ten or something like that. And then it becomes level one and then you re reawaken the skill up through the levels to level ten again. Is what I assume it's doing. Yes. Unless that needs a new material as well. I mean, that could be a thing. It, it could make it could need a whole new material. Uh, well, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. I don't. I don't actually know. We'll find out. There's Valor Cup gear. Festival areas coming in early summer. More details coming later. And that's it for the Dev Diary on Global. So there. Now we're done with the news. Now I will see you later tonight. Goodbye.